Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 Canadian Film Fest Q&A with this evening's films. We have the filmmakers from Proximity and A Small Fortune joining us. Can you both introduce yourselves? Hello, I'm Jamie Miller and I'm the director and writer of uh, Proximity. And I'm Adam Perry on uh, Prince Edward Island, and the writer and director of A Small Fortune. Congratulations to you both on your uh, exceptional films. We're thrilled to have them as part of the festival this year. Uh, we were just talking prior to uh, hitting record that um, both of your films are based on the East Coast, which uh, is great. I mean, and you, it sounds like that there's a lot of overlap in your community there on the East Coast as filmmakers in terms of support. Yeah, yeah, it's cool because uh, I made this, this is my first film um, that I, I've made back home in Newfoundland really um, since, since the pandemic, since moving home. And, uh, and I noticed on Adam's film, there's a lot of people, uh, his editor, Justin, designed the posters for my film. I know Jenna, the production manager, we used to make films together. There's just a lot of great East Coast folks overlapping. Yeah, our film is um, a co-production between Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland. And part of the deal was um, all the post-production was going to be completed in Newfoundland. So I got to work with all the Newfoundland uh, film stars and, uh, and post team, and they've done an incredible job. Um, we have a few talented people that work in post on PEI, mm -hmm. uh, but for this one, we needed, we needed the, full, the full gamut of, um, of skill sets. And uh, though I never got to go to Newfoundland and, and meet anyone in person, we've had some incredible uh, virtual calls like this one. And it um, took a bit longer to get post done uh, than we could have anticipated, but at the end of the day, the job was done and it was excellent. <laughs> Amazing. Well, one thing that struck me about both of your films is the incredible, beautiful landscapes that you feature. Um, it's just stunning to see that part of the country. Um, Jamie, is this your first short as a director? It's my first uh, fiction. I've, I've directed two short docs in the last few years. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, was, I was mainly producing before. So, you know, I kind of produce everything I make a little bit. Um, right. But yeah, it's it's the first it's the first script I've written really, and it's the first uh, yeah narrative that I've directed. So it's it was it's pretty fun. It's pretty terrifying too. <laughs> I'm sure, but I I mean it's a, a beautiful and successful short film. What was how did you come to the idea for it then? It's interesting. Like it's a few different things. Um, <clears throat> it definitely. A lot of the imagery is stuff that like has been percolating in my mind for mm. ever. My dad is a painter here in Newfoundland. He does a lot of um, seascapes and landscapes and um, he's written poetry and a lot of imagery he, he uses in his work, you know, is um, this idea of waiting for a ship, a woman out on the shore, one of his mm. old prints um, looking off to the horizon was a big inspiration. And, and that kind of, started connecting to different ideas I had about things that I wanted to make here about women's connection to the land and kind of unseen labor that happens, mm -hmm. um, the ways that women have been connected to the land and ocean in these kind of raw, rugged ways that we don't think about as much when we think about women's history here. Um, so that, that kind of bled into it. And then just like my own personal um, thoughts about big changes in life and, and, you know, how to how to make decisions that are kind of scary but you know will be important to you and, and how to like just jump into something um uh like you know going out to the ocean and and exploring even though it might be a, a catastrophic kind of change to your life it's it's something that i don't know i think about a lot there's uh one of the qualities I really love in this short is the, you know, the poeticism of 
the visuals and then kind of the contrast of the, te of the tedium of her everyday life, you know, that labor um, set against, you know, the unpredictable nature of her environment. It's, uh, it's a beautiful uh, film. How did you find your cast for this? It was really cool, actually. Um, <laughs> so Nico Paolo is a local, she, she just moved here um, with her partner a couple years ago. Um, she's, she's just this beautiful soul and spirit. And, um, and she's just been like kind of making art and, and making new connections since living in St. John's. And, and um, I've just been following, I was following her on Instagram and just her, her face was one of the, one of the main things. I was like, oh, she kind of has this sort of energy, like the character that I'm trying to build, mm -hmm. and and she's you know she is a musician and 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 she is an artist and and she has the this like creative spirit that I just felt like I could connect with as as a first time director. I was really interested in working with someone who maybe wasn't a traditional actress. So she, yeah, I reached out to Nico. We started chatting about it, and she was really <laughs> open to it and really loved the script because it felt like stuff that she loves to do on her own. She loves to bake and she loves, and she, you know, she's killed a rabbit or she's skinned a rabbit and, and mm -hmm. all these sorts of things. And so we just kind of did a rehearsal where we went out to our producer's house. She had like, we chopped some wood and we just like kind of talked through some of these activities together. And, uh, and it was lovely. It was just this very organic relationship and um, and I was just really interested in in working in a way of just like let's just live in this, um, mm. in this story and and be yourself in this in these circumstances. Amazing. So what's next for you? <sighs> um, I'm I'm working on a documentary, a short documentary project with a. Um, a organization here called Quadrangle, and now they're trying to start up the first. Uh, community center for LGBTQ folks in the province. We don't, we don't have mm -hmm. one. We're one of the only provinces that doesn't. Wow. Um, so yeah, so we're working on that right now and uh, you know, whatever that rolls into. Amazing. And if audiences at home want to follow you and your work, where, they, where can they find you? Um, they can find me on my website, seachangefilms.ca and uh, on Instagram, J. M.E. Lee Miller, Jamie Lee Miller. Amazing. Thank you, Jamie, so much for being part of the festival this year. Thank you. Adam, Hi. we get at the festival, we typically get um, a, a few thriller submissions. Uh, but I would say, I think in my, in my experience with the festival, this is our first East Coast one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, there's not many made out here. Uh, <laughs> But I do know that uh, it's been my ambition from an early age is to tell the darker stories of, of uh, the Maritimes, you know? So I'm glad that it was well received. So from an early age, uh, what, what made you want to tell this story? Is it based on something that happened or? Um, well, I've spent my entire life living on an island and surrounded mm -hmm. by water. And I spend a lot of time on the beaches and looking out at the ocean and wondering what's out there, both good and bad. And uh, I've got an imagination that um, lends itself to um, trouble and, and darkness, uh, if you will. Um, I started my career trying to make horror movies and made a few shorts um, just on my own, no budget. Um, and that we're talking like, you know, as a teenager and uh, I'm turning 40 this year. This is my first feature. And um, there was a good decade where I was trying to do comedy as well. And we had lots of success and built a great audience doing comedy web series here on PEI. Um, but I just felt that it was time to, to be a bit more dramatic. It was time, like I've matured as a filmmaker and as a storyteller and I thought, um, I was going to explore a story that had a bit more meat on its bones um, mm -hmm. and wasn't, um, wasn't trying to um, solicit laughs or, um, or feelings that um, 
that audiences usually expect with genre films. I wanted mm -hmm. to tell something that was a, you know, a true PEI story um, in the sense that stuff washes up on the shores here all the time mm -hmm. and you don't know where it comes from. Um, so I wanted, and I also wanted to tell a story that was closely knit and tied into my own family um, with the Irish Moss, my, my grandfather and his, his children were um, Irish monsters. And that's just a way of life that uh, doesn't really exist anymore. Um, and, I, and I wanted to capture that. And, and that was kind of the spark was like, if I could tell that story about the dying um, industry of Irish moss harvesting on PEI, set, that, set a thriller story about a found bag of money in that world, that was kind of the spark that I had years ago. And it was just, you know, slowly picking away at, at who these characters are and what the story is. And I think aside from, you know, the, the genre of the film, the commentary that goes throughout the film in terms of like the dying industries and where that leaves people as a consequence mm -hmm. is um, such a, a, an interesting commentary. And uh, to your point, maybe one that the rest of Canada doesn't fully understand, you know. Oh, absolutely. The There's... <sighs> So many men on PEI leave for greener pastures. Um, lots of people get educated and will go have successful careers off island. Many stay here on PEI. Um, but a lot of our, our men and women um, will get into the trades and get into industries that way. Um, and so we have great sectors full of talented individuals. Um, but a lot of farmers and, and fishermen um, there's only so many licenses that are given out and they are passed down through families. And so we have a lot of people that relied on um, the supplemental income from raking moss and, and everyone did it back then, women and children. Um, it was just a way to, you know, make a few um, thousand dollars extra every month. And, um, and now that the moss isn't here anymore, um, that way of life has, has kind of died out. And so I felt like, you know, the story of someone being left with no options but to leave their home to go and provide for their family, it's a common story here. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a hardship that a lot of families face and are accustomed to. And I've never left PEI to go out west to work. Um, but I know so many people that have. And so this is kind of me telling that story and, and exploiting that lifestyle. Um, so the rest of Canada can uh, get a slice of that. And it's uh, part of like the great characters that you've created in this film is showing that conflict of that pull to another industry in another province, but actually wanting to stay rooted in your community and where you're from and continue to contribute to that community and that economy. Um, yeah, I think, and the big revelation I had when I was finishing the script, like months before production began and I was writing the final draft or, or the shooting draft was I made the connection that Kevin, who's the, the lead in the movie, um, that character is not too different from myself. Um, I wouldn't say the film industry is dying. I'm saying I'm, it's, it's, we're going through a rebirth right now and it's, it's really booming actually. Um, but back when I was writing the script, I realized that here I am, um, you know, mid thirties, um, I've got two kids, uh, I've got a wonderful supportive wife. Um, but I'm now, I was making money to support myself, but now that I've got a supportive family, you know, trying to make a living in the film industry of PEI is not much different than trying to make a living in the mm -hmm. Irish boss industry on PEI. So there was a lot of emotional um, characteristics that I shared with a lot of the characters. And I just pulled, I pulled as many as I could um, from, from within to, to give to the characters on the page. And the actors picked up on that and, and did their own thing, which I'm, I'm grateful for. And speaking of your cast, you have a phenomenal cast uh, who deliver exceptional performances. Yeah, a lot of people say that, and I think so too. I, don't <laughs> get me wrong, but I do. I feel very privileged and lucky that I that I ended up with the cast that I got. Um, you know, I could talk for a half hour on how that came to be, 
But since I only have a few minutes, I will say <laughs> that uh, that Leanne Balaban was the was the first to the table. Um, I knew uh, when I was looking for who was going to play Sam, she was kind of always on, uh, like her headshot was on my wall when I was writing and I'd be like giving her a voice. And then when I approached her agent and was like, here's a project I'm working on. Um, I would love Leanne to read the script and, and give me some thoughts on the character and if she's interested. And, and she said, yes. Um, and so it was like, okay, if I got her, who else can I get? And she kind of like set the set the bar high from the get go, and then it was just like you know I had like Joel Thomas Hines I had done a short with him before, and he said he'd come back for me when I needed him. So mm -hmm. he was an, he was an easy call. Um, I knew um, um, Andrea Bang. I didn't know her personally, but Jenna, my producer, knew her and thought that she would be a great fit for Susan Crow. Um, as the fish out of water in the story mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. and so when she came on it was just like oh my god but Stephen Oates who's who's the lead um you know we were we were very close to production and I hadn't casted the the lead actor yet oh wow and he's the first one cast and I was really struggling I was working with a um casting agent out of Toronto and I was getting sent all these auditions and there was, there were so many good looking men coming in, but they were all like, I could tell they were really trying to capture that East coast essence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I wasn't buying it, buying any of it. And I really needed someone that was from the East coast that understood this lifestyle and, um, and that could act. And, uh, and so I was asking her, it was Joel Thomas Hines who I, he was like, who's playing the lead. And I'm like, I don't know yet. And he <laughs> said that I should call Stephen Oates, his friend, Stephen Oates. And so I was like, okay, I'll put him on the list. As soon as I had my first call, like within five minutes, I was totally convinced that this was our guy. So uh, it was kind of a backwards way of doing things, but right. I mean, the results speak for themselves. Yeah, I, it's a, a, a great film. As I said, the performances are phenomenal, so strong. Um, I love that this is an, a thriller set in the East Coast in yeah, Canada. It's, it's, there's not, there's not, uh, it's not something that I think Canadians um, have seen before. Um, no. That area of PEI that we shot, you know, is usually reserved for tourism ads. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, my goal for the past 20 years was to, you know, tell a big story on PEI and exploit, you know, the beauty of our island in ways nobody's seen before. So if you're telling me I've done that, then, then thank you. I think you have, and I think our audiences at home um, would agree. Thank you so much for bringing a small fortune to the Canadian Film Fest this year. Where can people see the film after the festival? Well, it's got a uh, broadcast window with Super Channel, so it will be streaming on their platform um, and broadcast on their platform um, later this year. And I think that's, I think that will be, a, and iTunes will be the home for it um, in Canada and outside of Canada. Um, we're still, we're still in negotiations. Amazing. And if people wanted to follow the film and you as a filmmaker, where can they find you? Uh, we have a Facebook page. Um, if you just uh, search for a small fortune movie, you should find it. And I'm on Instagram at Perry Boy Apes. That's my, that's my handle. And uh, I'm not very active there. I'm not, I'm not a big uh, influencer of any kind. <laughs> but if you need to get in touch with me, those are the two ways to do it. Amazing. Well, uh, Adam, Jamie, thank you so much for being part of the festival. And we hope you come back to us in future with your projects. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much, Ashley. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we will see you tomorrow. Sit back, relax when it's the greatest. Hey, don't get better than this.